Hi everyone, hope you're having a wonderful and purposeful day. Welcome to the ninth and final episode in the series on the life of John Newton. I hope you have been enjoying this series. In this episode, let's look at Newton's influence and impact in his later years. Most importantly, his role in the abolitionist movement against the slave trade. There is no doubt that Newton was uniquely qualified for his role in this effort. He had experienced the slave trade from all possible angles. He had been a slave owner and trader in Africa. He had operated factories in Africa where the captured natives were imprisoned till they were sold. He had been a slave ship captain visiting Africa to purchase slaves. He had seen and participated in the brutal treatment of slaves on board these slave ships. He had witnessed the auctions where the slaves were eventually sold in the West. In addition to all of this, he himself had been a slave under Amos Clow and P.I. for a brief period. Let's look at Newton's efforts from two specific angles. Firstly, from the standpoint of his relationship with key figures in the anti-slavery movement. Next, how he used his personal experience and testimony to support this cause. Newton had gathered quite a following in England. His fame had spread beyond Oni as a result of his writing ministry. Many ministers and other influential figures visited Oni to seek guidance from Newton. A notable visitor was Hannah Wilberforce, the aunt of William Wilberforce. I am sure you all know William Wilberforce. Well, Wilberforce, who was raised by his aunt and uncle, had the opportunity to listen to Newton's stories about the slave trade as a boy. Wilberforce grew up to become a bright young man and got elected to parliament. Though he was unfaithful initially, gambling and enjoying the sins of England, God, in his abundant mercy, rescued Wilberforce. After giving up his ungodly practices in 1785, Wilberforce began to contemplate a career as a church minister. He was in a state of emotional turmoil, ready to quit his political career. It was at this point that Newton re-entered Wilberforce's life. Newton had moved to London after serving the people of Oney for 16 years. He had been appointed as rector to St. Mary Vernon. In this new role, Newton had the opportunity to meet and serve some leading English figures. His greatest impact was in the life of William Wilberforce. Newton took a deep interest in Wilberforce because of his friendship with Wilberforce's aunt, Hannah. He mentored Wilberforce and convinced him to continue serving in Parliament stating that perhaps this was God's purpose for his life. Who knows what would have happened to the abolitionist movement if Wilberforce had quit politics at that time. God put Newton in Wilberforce's life to guide and encourage him all the way. While Wilberforce was inspired to lead the fight against the slave trade by anti-slavery campaigners and groups looking for a political sponsor, John Newton's role cannot be denied. In fact, it was after he had spent an entire day receiving guidance and godly counsel from Newton that Wilberforce made his famous declaration. God Almighty had set before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the reformation of manners. Another important step in the abolition movement was to change the public's opinion of the slave trade. This is where John Newton's testimony had a profound effect. He published his personal experiences in the slave trade in a highly influential pamphlet titled Thoughts Upon the African Slave Trade. Newton painted a vivid picture of the slave trade, detailing the suffering of the African natives who were hunted, captured, and enslaved. According to Newton, the English public was indifferent to the slave trade because they considered the native people of Africa to be savages. Newton recorded his observations of the African people, making it clear that those involved in the slave trade were the true savages. He also exaggerated the difficulties faced by the sailors and the mortality of the Englishmen on these ships, knowing that the parliament cared more about the plight of its own people. 
Soon after this, Newton also got the opportunity to share his slave trading experiences before senior members of parliament who were investigating the slave trade. Through all these efforts, Newton was able to contribute towards the rising awareness of the brutalities of the slave trade. With the consistent and tireless effort of many people under the leadership of William Wilberforce, the slave trade was finally abolished in the year 1807. There is no doubt that this news brought Newton great joy. Newton passed away later that year on December 21st, 1807. Though he suffered many laws such as the death of Polly in 1790, his faith remained strong and the proclamation of the gospel was his chief purpose. Till the very end, Newton never forgot the mercies of God in his life, how God rescued him, a slave trading blasphemer, and saved him through the fateful Atlantic storm. He confessed these words before he died, I am a great sinner but Christ is a great savior. I hope you enjoyed this series on the life of John Newton. Remember that the God that delivered Newton can do the same for you. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. As always, like and share this video with your friends and family. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. Take care and I'll see you all in the next video series.